Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail ball set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Hey guys, it's time to talk indie wrestling. Mike Sork, indie mayhem show. 119, and we got a really exciting one lined up for you here here in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, in the Mayhem Studios, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, video producer here with the International Wrestling Cartel, the Cartel that had a very wild one this past weekend with Reloaded 2.0. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but also, Eamon, Eamon 2, please, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, joining us from San Antonio, Texas. How you doing, sir? Yes, indeed. I'm doing fantastic. So we're always good to be here every week talking with you about the world of independent wrestling. Yes, exciting stuff in in, in indie wrestling. Um, a lot of it really, uh, check out Wrestling Mayhem Show 519, even though I think I said the wrong number at the beginning of that one. Uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion happening with Evolve and everything uh, that, that definitely bleeds into there. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue that, and we're going to have a wonderful, wonderful interview uh, for you once again this week. Uh, so uh, check out the show. Check out the other shows at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, subscribe to this and everything else over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, Google Music Podcasting. We're on there as well. Or the video versions on our Facebook uh, or our YouTube channel for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we're actually uh, starting to live stream some of these shows on, on Tuesday night. So so keep an ear out for that. Uh, it's still in experimentation mode, but if you follow us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page, uh, you should get notifications when we do pop up with stuff like that. Uh, maybe random interviews. Or, or something. We're, we're, we're still working on what we're going to exactly do over there. You can also drop us a line at 412 206 WMS0 or the email uh, goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can let us know questions for any interviews that we have announced coming up or uh, anybody you think we should talk to, any indie wrestling you think we should check out. Let us know. We'd love uh, any contributions to the show that way. Eamon, uh, who are we talking to this week? Uh, we got a very special return guest this week. Uh, this is actually. About a year ago since we last talked to this guest, and, and I believe like two years ago since we talked to her for the very first time when she was just starting out in professional wrestling. Uh, and we're going to talk to her a bit how like stuff has changed in two years in advance. Uh, please welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show, Delilah Doom. Delilah, how are you this evening? Hi, thanks for having me back, you guys. No problem. Love having you back. Love talking to you about uh, uh, the stuff you're doing in the indie wrestling scene. So uh, uh, like I said, it's been a year since we last had you on and talked with you. Uh, uh, what's... I guess just in general, what's uh, wrestling been like for you since then? Um, I've been having a lot of great opportunities come my way, which is great. Um, in wrestling, or training full time in San Antonio with Funaki still. Um, I've been traveling a little bit more. Yeah, good things are on the horizon. So, fingers Absolutely. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, going into obviously because you, like you mentioned, you're still training full time and, and working out. Uh, 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 with Funaki and the Funaki Dojo in San Antonio. Uh, what are some of the things, I guess, that you've picked up on that you haven't, that, that maybe you weren't able to achieve like a year ago? Is there anything that you kind of have really been impressed with yourself at as far as uh, how you've developed? Um, well, I mean, Funaki is extremely patient. So his teaching, his ways of teaching is, is easy for me to learn. Uh, I don't know. I've just, I've conquered a few of my fears in the ring during training, which is always awesome on my part. Um, you know, Thomas Shire trains down there now, so he has a lot of knowledge to, to give out. And, um, I don't know, Funaki is with WWE still. So whenever he goes on a trip and he returns back, he always has new, uh, new drills and new lessons that he, he learned in NXT that he brings to us. So that's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, going to it in your work, uh, in the ring as well and the stuff you've been doing in the last year, uh, I, I can personally say, I, I feel like a lot of people have seen that you've kind of grown in confidence a lot when it comes to the stuff you're doing in the ring and, and, and sort of gelling more into, into, into wrestling. Do you, do you feel that's kind of the case? Thank you. Uh, I do feel more confident now than I did a year ago. Yes. <laughs> and I can, when I watch back my matches, you know, obviously, I always have things to work on. I always have something to improve on. But I can see, you know, where I have grown and where I have gotten better, which is it's always 
good to see that because I'm like, okay, I'm making progress. I'm slowly, slowly getting better. But obviously there's always room to grow, always things that I have to do better, I need to do better. Absolutely. Uh, and when it comes to sort of the matches that you've had since then, uh, uh, are there any opponents necessarily that kind of stuck out in your mind as people that you really were were glad to get in the ring with and, and, and learn from? Yeah, I actually, I don't know how many, like this match really wasn't published, but I, I worked with Athena, uh, I think it was about a year ago, and that was one of my most toughest matches, and I learned a lot. And I was, I'm so grateful that I actually got to get in the ring with her before she got signed. So I would say Athena, uh, I had the opportunity to work with Veda Scott not too long ago in Inspire. That was tough. That was a great learning experience. Um, this past Friday, I got to be in the ring with uh, cheerleader Melissa for RCW. And she was awesome. She is one tough chick. And <laughs> I am looking forward to working with her again. And then I also, Barbie, I miss, I had, I got to work with her a couple of times before she moved to Florida and I'm hoping I get to have the opportunity to work with her again in the future. So. Awesome. Definitely. Uh, and, and I guess sort of going towards, um, uh, the fact that you're working a lot of places now as well. I know when the last time we talked to you, you were, you were kind of getting out there more, but now you're even more traveling and, and, and getting out to other places. How does it feel to kind of really get your name out there? Uh, uh, around the wrestling scene? It's scary. It's nerve-wracking, but, you know, obviously it's it's my goal to travel, so I am hoping that by next year I am branched out more, you know, East Coast, West Coast, you know, getting out of Texas. That's, that's a goal. I'm working on it, so, you know, hopefully by next year that will be a thing. Awesome. Definitely, and also, the um, not just uh, specific opponents, but also I feel like you've gotten the chance to work a variety of different opponents in different matches as well, which I, I, I think is, do you feel is sort of an important thing? Because I feel like you've also worked numerous different styles of matches as well over the last years, for, as far as I've seen. Uh, uh, I mean, you've done everything from Tangle with like the top women in, in Texas to like wrestling guys like Tim Storm and Davey Vega, you know, who are, you know, kind of those like male veterans, like. Uh, what's it been like, sort of, the, the different stuff you've been able to do now? Um, I'm just working different people like that, like Tim Storm, like Davey Vega, uh, Angelus Lane. I get to learn something different from everybody, something that I didn't know before, something I've never tried before, and I get to kind of be more rounded as a as a wrestler and in the ring, I think. Definitely. Uh, and, and also, uh, you mentioned Angelus Lane, because I think that's definitely one of the biggest things – that, that came from the last year was your feud with her and, and the ultimate match that you had with her in Inspire Pro. I know after that happened, Sword was telling me about how, how many different videos he saw of you putting her through that table and, and, and the, the chaos behind it all. Uh, and, and it was definitely a very big match, uh, uh, both for, I was assuming both the, both you and Angelus, but also Inspire Pro. Uh, uh, what was it like, uh, the whole feud that you guys had for most of last year? Um, I, coming out of that, she pushed me to limits that I never knew I could go to. And I think we have changed. I, I came out a, a different wrestler after our last match. So I thank her for that. She definitely, I, I, I don't know. She, something in me just because of her. So <laughs> definitely. And, and, and obviously from the last Inspire Pro show, she's apparently made her way back to Inspire Pro uh, as a part of uh, the new movement, which you're involved in, which uh, yeah, it's got to be interesting. Yeah. I want to talk about that. <laughs> you know. I know you were not that big of a fan when, uh, when you found out, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, maybe, yeah, we'll be see. To, maybe you two will be able to work it out. Who knows? Um, uh, I also want to get your thoughts because I know um, when we've had you on in the past that uh, one of the uh, uh, people you kind of cited as one of the people that got you into wrestling uh, uh, when you were younger was China. And I know uh, her recent passing not too long ago. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that, uh, uh, of uh, what had happened recently and, and uh, if you have any thoughts on her sort of impact she's had in professional wrestling. Um. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I have to. I, when, when I when I heard that she passed, uh, it was very hard for me, just because she was someone I looked up to growing up, and 
one of my goals was to eventually, you know, at least meet her and just thank her. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's really heartbreaking. And um, I definitely think she she changed uh, wrestling, women's wrestling, you know, with the intergen, like winning the Intercontinental Championship and just being in the ring with guys. Uh, she definitely was, was breaking ground. And uh, it's really sad <laughs> that she passed and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and and I think a lot of people, I mean, we've talked for a, a couple of years now. It's been the whole, I guess, people say women's wrestling revolution that's happening in, in wrestling nowadays. Uh, and and the, the, the things that women are, are capable of do, doing in a wrestling capacity nowadays, would you feel that's kind of, uh, both from her impact, but also you feel that's kind of increased uh, over time now and, and now, now in 2016? Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely, it's it's making progress. I do think women's wrestling, it, how do I say this? I just think people need to put more faith in women's wrestling and realize what women can do that, you know, we are capable of having matches just like the guys. And I think um, it just needs to be broadcast more. People need to put more faith in it so that it does, it's equal, you know. So it's viewed mm -hmm. equally, but I definitely think uh, a lot has changed for the better, and hopefully it keeps continuing. Yeah, I, and I think in the case of especially uh, maybe looking on an independent level as well, like how more women are kind of getting more opportunities than ever. Like I think people like back in the day, I feel like it was kind of the, there was one women's match on the show, and that was kind of like for you know to be the women's match on the show. And now we're seeing like yes. really strong competitors develop across the independent scene. Would you say, would you say that's the case? Yeah. I mean, you see companies that are just women, like just the uh, strictly women based, which is awesome. Um, you know, females are getting maintenance uh, and we're, we're not just a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I can't think of it. Oh, God. I feel stupid. <laughs> um, you know, when they, the women's match would be, oh, come to our show. We have women. We have a women's match. Yeah. I, what's that word I'm looking for? You know, they have some wrestling. Well, like, a, like a special attraction. Is kind of what you're Thank doing. you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We are no longer just a special attraction. Although I do think a few co you know, companies probably still use women's wrestling as a special attraction, but it's definitely progressing and it's growing. So I think it's good. No, it's definitely it's, it's definitely good to see. Uh, speaking of like you know different companies and different places that are 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 kind of embracing women's wrestling, uh, is there any particular places that you kind of have your eye on and places you want to work, or also people necessarily that you kind of have your dream opponents that you want to get in the ring with? Um, I definitely would love to get to Shimmer and Shine. Uh, that's a goal of mine. Uh, stardom in Japan, something I'm really. Uh, pushing for uh, crossing my fingers that eventually I will be able to get to go out there and wrestle in Japan. That's um, next to WWE going to Japan is one of my biggest goals in wrestling. Um, and I mean, as for opponents, I, I've just, I'm, I'm great. Uh, grateful for any opportunity I'm given. Uh, so I don't know. I would love to wrestle Veda again. Um, uh, Sue Young I would love to uh, have the opportunity to work with her. There are just there are so many females I wanna I wanna meet and and learn from and you know get in the ring with. So um, actually, I have the opportunity next uh, Friday uh, to work with uh, the Bullet Babe herself, Amber O'Neill. So I'm really excited for that. A little nervous. <laughs> Trying to do some studying. <laughs> but definitely, and it feels like you're at that point now where you're kind of getting to wrestle sort of bigger name competitors, like a cheerleader, Melissa, like an Athena. So uh, uh, is, is, are you glad to kind of be in that point where like promoters are kind of trusting in you to kind of, you know, wrestle those kind of talents? It feels really great. It's still like, <gasps> really? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I work hard. I train hard. You know, I mean, I know nothing is given to you. So if someone thinks I deserve an opportunity to work someone, to work a name, like think like, I'm very, very grateful and just thank you for those who believe in me. 
<laughs> Definitely. Um, you also mentioned uh, uh, traveling, and, and uh, especially in the Texas wrestling scene, I think the topic of traveling comes up a lot because uh, Texas is kind of considered to be sort of its own kind of world in a sense uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to wrestling. Uh, uh, obviously, you've gotten to travel out to different places now and, and, and work in different states. Uh, uh, what's a, do you find it? Do you agree with sort of the importance, I guess, of, of being on the road and sort of traveling more and getting your name out? Oh, yes. I think that's one of the best ways to do it is even if, you know, you don't know if you're going to be wrestling there, just to go with a car load, introduce yourself and, you know, get your face out there to different promoters. But I definitely think traveling is key. Hey, sorry, my cat's eating a tree. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. Sorry. Hey, stop. It it happens. It's all good. Um, (laughs) Going to uh, uh, another kind of regular question we have uh, uh, on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, We usually ask, like, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? But I know you've actually answered that a couple times. So uh, uh, another thing I kind of wanted to dive in with you about is, um, uh, is there anything particular you're watching currently wrestling-wise, whether it be – recreational or uh, for studying purposes? Is there anything that you like currently have your eye on? Um, I mean, I watch a lot of, I think I have answered this. And if I, if I repeat myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, I, I watch a lot of, uh, right, right now, a lot of Lucha stuff. Um, I've had the opportunity to work a couple Lucha shows and hmm. learn some Lucha things. And it kind of sparked my interest even more, um, especially if I'm having the opportunity to go to Lucha shows. So I've been, trying to brush up on, on, uh, Lucha. So that's fun. Um, and I'm always watching NXT. I love NXT. I love their product. Um, and then, you know, whatever Thomas Shire is watching, I, I'll watch <laughs> with him. We like a lot of Japanese, New Japan, that type of stuff. Awesome. Definitely. And I guess instead of a, instead of a best and worst, uh, uh thing about indie wrestling question, uh, I guess the better question as you would be, um, uh, what's the biggest lesson you've learned in the last year of being an indie wrestler? Nothing is handed to you. <laughs> and even if you work hard and even if you train hard, you are not guaranteed anything. So. Definitely. And that's a, and that's a good way to be. And then we actually talked about this last time you were on the show about, um, uh, one of the, I guess, the biggest factors for you was also sort of your positive attitude that, that I know like a lot of people have cited uh, being on shows with you. And would you say that kind of plays into that as, as not, ex- you know, like you said, not expecting that, and, and you know, anything and everything and kind of that, I because that's the thing I think I feel I get the most from you is sort of a sense of humbleness in, in your work. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to say I, I don't get negative I mean, obviously everybody will get to a point where they're like, you know, but yeah, I, I always, you know, keep PMA, positive mental attitude, because I definitely think that has a, a key in the future outcomes. You know, if you send positive eyes out to the universe, the universe will eventually give back. So Awesome. Definitely. And, and yeah, I, th- I definitely think it plays into into your work, into your success uh, as of late. So Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for coming on and, and talking with us uh, uh, since we last talked to you. It was great having you back to chat uh, uh, the stuff you've been doing. Uh, if you have any other upcoming dates that people can check you out on or if they can follow you on social media, please feel free to uh, let everyone know. Okay, ready. Let's see. <laughs> uh, next Friday on the 20th in Sherman, Texas, I will be at NWA Texoma. On the 21st, which is a Saturday, I will be at Main Event Wrestling in I hope I don't say this wrong, Carthage, Texas, I think. Mm. Um, and then June 3rd, I will be at RCW uh, at Retama Park right outside of San Antonio. You can catch me at Inspire every month. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Delilah underscore Doom, where the O's are zeros. <laughs> and on Facebook at Delilah Doom. And on Twitter at Delilah underscore Doom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if you guys want to buy shirts or 8x10s or stickers and you can't catch me at a show, please send me a message and I will send you whatever you desire. Absolutely. <laughs> Another note about you, very fantastic merchandise. So definitely go, go support the <laughs> Delilah Doom monetarily with that uh, by buying a t-shirt or, or a sticker or anything like that. 
Um, so, so again, thank you very much, Zelaya, for coming on and talking with us. Uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, and take a look at uh, a certain video from uh, our Mayhem uh, anniversary this past year. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back uh, with some more Indie Mayhem Show. Sweet. Ah, none. Yeah, you know, just uh, dozens of new friends, uh, city I want to move to. Um, I consider uh, Pittsburgh my second city, my second family, my second home. Um, yeah, without, without, actually, I got to credit Vimmel. I, I know I've told this on, on one of Sorg's basic Sorg announcements before, but without uh, Vimmel showing that he can visit Pittsburgh and remain unscathed, um... I never would have visited Pittsburgh, and I never would have met you lovely people, and all of my friends that came from that. Like, uh, I have more friends in Pittsburgh now than I do in the greater New York area, and that is pretty amazing. Indy Mayhem Show, Mike Sorg, Sorgatron on the Twitter, Eamon Payton, voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, talking Indy. Uh, it, it, it's on our minds. And like I said, it was on our minds at Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, 519 uh, that we recorded earlier this afternoon. Uh, but, uh, you know, some big news, of course, evolve. Uh, we won't, we'll spare you the details. We get into a little bit of more of a discussion about what happened there. We, we, talk, we talk a lot about the, 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 the chunk of what happened and, and kind right. of mainstream kind of implication on it so and it, it kind of parlayed into what is the status of impact wrestling as as we often do on that site but i i think it's very interesting the the way i want to kind of look at it here is uh, you know the indies is the indies are a lot of times the battleground right like we have drew galloway and we have um um, um eric carter uh uh kind of using it as a soundboard touching on their perceived or real life experiences in in the big promotion, you know, and and using that to get attention, right? You know, and as we discussed earlier, um, maybe getting attention uh, that they're not getting as part of a televised program right now, right? There's no buzz yeah. around it, and they're and they're creating a buzz and getting getting people's attention, maybe getting WWE's attention. But I I I I think about how many times over the years I've witnessed um, at indie wrestling, like kind of this soundboard, right? Heyman, you were there amidst the uh, Daniel Bryan controversy several years ago at Chikara's show in Cleveland with me when <laughs> when Daniel Bryan was out there and said, maybe I'll go to TNA and I'll have some stupid name over there, right? <laughs> uh, which is funny because now, like, kind of NXT is that thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, it was a soundboard, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and for something like that. Or you get CM Punk uh, 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 giving the stamp of approval to Gregory Iron. You know, uh, you see this all the time, and I think it's very interesting to see how these play out, create buzz, and and let you know let people kind of have that in the middle of it. Or every time I see Shane Douglas come out and he tells me he tells uh, anybody that'll listen how much Dixie Carter is is a bitch and other things you probably shouldn't say in front of children. You know, uh, if, if people or how Ric Flair is a horrible, horrible person, as he does. Um, I mean, this it, 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 it's and I'm sure you've witnessed this over the years as well. Right. No, totally. I think I think indie wrestling was was stigmatizes this. And, but, it, but it was uh, to a degree very true. That place where it was like, oh, let's rebel. You know, let's let's you know, this is the place where all the real stuff happens and, and and guys get to be the real, the way they really are, and not how you know this machine wants them to be, kind of thing. That's that's how that's how a lot of people got popular. I feel like in sort of the mid two thousands of when indie wrestling kind of rose, um, and and you see some of that still nowadays. Obviously, on like the stuff we haven't involved and stuff like that. Uh, but like, I, I I think the focus has shifted almost in a degree of. Well, indie wrestling can kind of. I feel. I feel, and it goes back to a discussion we had at the Mayhem Show. Um, I feel the lines of what indie wrestling is now have been blurred to such a degree that the, that that whole rebel against the man thing has kind of fallen by the wayside, almost for the most part. Right. Right. If that makes sense, like, like the the fact that. A lot of places are just considered 
to me at least, are just considered wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Ring of Honor is not indie wrestling anymore. Like, they're a love viable enough company now where, you know, they're, what's to argue to say that they aren't, you know, and because you've had that. You've had guys who were on a level of a Ring of Honor uh, who were, I, I know, like the, the Young Bucks and like the Kevin Steens of the world who weren't happy during like the Jim Corn era, in that era, go to un- other indies and cut similar promos a- along those lines where it touches on stuff like that. And it's like that's happening on a smaller enough level. It's not even happening on like a WWE versus the world kind of level. Right. You know? Right. Uh, and, and or go ahead. Sorry, just adjusting some things. Um, right, exactly. And I, I, I think, I said, it's it's always a sounding board, right? And um, um, and, and, and it's that freedom. That's why it's independent. They don't have anybody to answer to. Yeah. Uh, but then I also wonder, you know, at, at that point, you know, we don't know about the relationship with Evolve. Like, exactly, exactly. And I, and I think, and I, think I think it's one of those things where, as long as it's happening in that ring, I don't think like it's going to do anything with WWE. You know what I mean? Like it, it, the, I, I think when you look at WWE, their camp WWE stuff, right? Um, they know the joke. They like yeah. the WWE themselves knows the deal. Knows the perception and they reflected it a lot in this camp WWE, right. Or in, uh, edge and Christian. Right. Um, yeah. Where they're basically blatantly saying like stuff about like TNA and, and yeah. CM Punk and stuff like that. Yeah. Everybody's in on the joke. Everybody's in on the impression. Everybody's in on what the internet says. And, and, and I don't think it has the input. Like, I can't believe he said that. He'll never get a job with WWE again. Uh, look at the people. I think that, it's so hard to shock people too. Nowadays. That, that's, that's it I too. Think- I think that plays into it. Like, the, there's not as much stuff that can surprise people. I think anymore in that kind of capacity. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, and, and everybody's everybody's out there making their mark, and 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 between the indies, between the wrestlers, everybody's trying to stick out. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think that's something that we uh, you have to remember when you're when you're seeing stories like this. Um, Hey, maybe we'll get lucky, and these two. This is something that these two can get, um, get a look, get the attention of somebody at WWE, and um, and 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 really have an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. So you never know. You never know. All right. Anything else popping up in the indies? I know, uh, of course, for a great rundown, go over to indie wrestling. Dot us, our buddy uh, um, um, Mac Harlins has a great uh, multimedia rundown over there uh, of everything going on in the indies, um, including uh, you know stuff from uh, Pentagon Junior being featured on on some of this stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff from Evolve sixty one, as we have been discussing uh, on on both of the Wrestling Mayhem shows this week. Um, but also, I was not there for IWC's Reloaded this weekend. Um, and I'm really happy with everything that I've heard and saw. I was I had to work another event that had nothing to do with pro wrestling. Um, and and uh, I loved, you know, uh, uh, life of the show. Missy was doing a great job of uh, of tweeting videos from the night, and I was getting my updates there. And I'll, I'll be editing that in in the coming uh, weeks, of course. Uh, but there was a lot of mayhem to be had. Of course, friends of the show, DJ Zima Ion and uh, Jimmy DeMarco in a crazy street fight all over the place, taking out basically half the crowd uh, in in the con <laughs> in, 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 in in the long run. Uh, thumbtacks. It's just some crazy, crazy stuff. There's a slow mo of Jimmy DeMarco taking the tax, a DDT into the tax. Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap! And and of course. Uh, pictures of Zima's back. Um, Zima talking about how he's feeling like he's really kind of uh, opened up coming back to the IWC recently, his, his home promotion. And of course, also Billy Gunn was, was a part of it as well. Against, uh, you know, I think a lot of us are kind of calling mini Billy Gunn uh, Dylan Bostic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to, to check out the promo between these two. Uh, very cool, very entertaining stuff. Kalisto, we're talking about the Indies. I, I think there's just an open thing. Remember when like it used to be like CM Punk would pop up at a show when he was signed with WWE and got in trouble? 
right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Back when he was in ECW. Not like, hey, here's Kalisto hanging out at Freelance Wrestling. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, Why not? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, 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 yeah. Um, of course, the relationships with Evolve. I, I think just the floodgates have been opened, and I think it's really cool to see where they might they might go with this. So, yeah, totally. So, um, other than that, uh, we have a, a, a vicious outcast wrestling and our friend of the show, friend of indie wrestling dot us. Uh, they had the uh, 2016 Queen of the Ring, a friend of the show, Samantha Starr. Uh, which I believe is the niece of uh, Jake Roberts, uh, is is the uh, queen of the ring with them. Again, we talked about women's wrestling with Delilah Doom earlier. Good to see um, that tournament. I think that is the third year for their uh, queen of the ring tournament. It's great to see them doing a lot of great stuff there, too. So, um, I don't know. Anything else from the Indies this week that caught your attention, good sir? Uh, that, that about covers it, for the most part. Uh, obviously, a bunch of groups are doing amazing things, so always... Keep an eye out for stuff that's in your area because it's usually something. There's usually something you can find. Yep, and, and uh, let me put a call out. Uh, I am going to be in the greater Los Angeles area, uh, I believe, uh, between the time the dates of uh, uh, May fifteenth and the twenty third, whatever that Sunday is. Uh, mm-hmm. If there is any indie wrestling happening in that greater area. Uh, I don't know if it's something I can get to with my, my work schedule I'm going to have out there, but I want to find some. I, I, we talked about on here, I narrowly missed pro wrestling when I was in uh, Tennessee, uh, in, in, around Nashville and Cookville. Uh, I'm going to be north of L.A. for the most part, I think. Maybe a stop in San Diego early in the week. Uh, if there's anything happening, obviously I don't know about the middle of the week, but if there is anything happening, indie wrestling, uh, a little known, anything like that, let me know. I, I want to check it out. I, I want to, you know, I'm having a lot of opportunities to travel here, Eamon, and I want to take advantage of those. And if we can find some indie wrestling that I can go check out, I want to be there, man. I want to be there and give, give you guys a full report and see how see how how it's done in other parts of the of the country. You know, uh, maybe the Absolutely. world, maybe the world, as we're looking at some of our itinerary uh, for this next year. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's take let's take advantage of this. And, and see if we can find some cool stuff. Let us know. And you can let us know over at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com or 412 206 WMS0. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, please subscribe to this and so much more at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. Amen. At Amen 2, please. No, that's wrong. Yes, indeed. Amen 2, please. And the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. You can find us on Go Starbucks. now to ProWrestlingTees.com uh, and, and visit the wrestling promotion section of that store. And you can see Inspire Pro Wrestling on there. We just. Uh, got our store added on there. We have we only have one T-shirt up there right now, but we're going to be adding more coming soon. So be sure to uh, to check us out over there and go support, support us monetarily. And of course, it's the best T-shirt because it's the one you can wear right now. Um, and mm-hmm. everything else, uh, uh, check out. Uh, keep an eye out. It's going to take a little longer because I'm going to have to post edit this. But uh, Reloaded 2.0 will be coming to IndieWrestling.us very soonish. Hopefully by the end of the week, actually. Uh, so keep an ear out for that as well. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Thank you to Delilah, Delilah Doom. Always a pleasure to uh, catch up with her uh, and uh, and everybody else. Check out past episodes. A lot of great interviews in the last weeks, the last few weeks, including Les Thatcher, Booker T, Scott Hall, and uh, so, so many more. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with stuff. And we're having a lot of very interesting uh, 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 faces over on uh, uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show as well. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for uh, Eamon and, the, and everybody else here at the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, support indie wrestling. Oh. Sick, 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 you know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see it from a back down. Act wow. Steady sipping check. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.